welcome back everyone to the Spectral League today. It is going to be I Toasty just like an hour ago and we're going to be here with Slithering Sam as well and we're going to be bringing you the coverage for second game of today and the in fact last game of today which is console rookies versus Illusion Z Solar. What are we thinking Sam? Well, these two teams relatively evenly matched. Uh, although one team has a slightly higher team SR, they both seem to scrim at very similar SRs. So I expect this game to go the distance, and I'm really hoping for it to go the distance. We don't want another 3-0. Yeah, I mean, after that 3-0 from last time, where it was actually another Illusion team as well uh, from that org that ended up getting 3 0 So hopefully there is some uh, kind of pride and, and redemption here for Illusion Z Solar, um, whereas Console Rookies, I mean, they are, they're coming in, they have the first map pick, they're technically the highest seed, although like you said, Scrim SRs are relatively similar, so it's not too much to base it off of, um, but as a higher seed, Console Rookies do get that first map pick, so there's a bit of an advantage there, but not too much. Uh, yeah, I think Control Point as well, uh, A lot, unlike a lot of the other map types, it really is a lot different. Uh, you're being run in different compositions, so... Even though you do choose this control map, um, it can go any multitude of ways after control. Um, although this map is very good to understand how the teams generally stack up against each other. If, we, if one team gets absolutely rolled, you can tell relatively what's going on. Yeah, to be fair. And uh, I mean, a, a lot of a series can also be decided by control um, because it's, you know, you get the first leg up in the series. Um, of course, the enemy team would end up getting the, the map pick because they are it is a kind of loser's pick format. Yeah, um, exactly. But still, having that first leg up in the series is always good on control. And with it being Busan, this was a first map in the last series as well. So a lot of teams opt towards this maybe as, as their first map of choice, given that Li Zhang is kind of out of the pool, which is a relatively popular map. Thank, thank you, Li Zhang is gone. The amount of times that I have only casted Li Zhang in a tournament. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. Busan, it's a nice breath of, breath of fresh air. Uh, this uh, this map, Mecha Base, uh, you could run... Well, I think you're probably going to run Brawl here, uh, realistically. Yeah, we saw the other teams from last time, the other Illusion team against, uh, I believe, I, I can't even remember what team it was. Um, but they did end up playing the Mirrored Brawl here with the May. Um, we might see a Junkrat here from one of the sides, but who knows? Yeah, Junkrat, I think, definitely provides a lot of damage. The only problem is that you don't get the utility of the Freeze or the Maywall. So you have to really be doing a lot of damage if you want to get the utility out of the Junkrat. It's more traditional on maps like uh, Li Zhang in Control Center, but Mecha Base here. I've not seen it run, but we'll, let, well I'm going to see it run now. Yeah, we get to see it for uh, quite a rare occasion, I suppose. It's not something that people usually play, but I mean, hey-ho, it has a lot of potential to, to pop off. So we'll see what happens here. Of course, both these teams are on that Brawl Mirror, so it'll be down to whoever gets um, a lot more aggression going in here. And with that Reinhardt actually going uh, <laughs> very, you know, kind of far back there, doesn't uh, end up well here for console rookies. The Reinhardt actually fell down a pit, I believe, so... Didn't quite work out too well for them. There is picks on both sides here, in fact, but I do think it will be the cleanup coming through onto KMS1. That last fight, um, I think it was uh, Cole, who managed to get a boop on um, Reinhardt, Sat Jang, uh, right down the hole, and he wasn't available in the team fight. So he just, uh, you have no main tank, they just got charged, there was no counter for it. Uh, so that's, that's the thing as well. I, like, I was confused as to what happened there, but I mean, there is still a fight happening on the point here. Both of these teams, you know, they got those players back. It's going very scrappy at this moment in time. Uh, but you see Juicy here just on the high ground, just dumping in the damage from afar and uh, able to really control the space. Takes off NWD there. Really nice shot, but the Reinhardt does go down and a Shatter actually is utilized here by Stownag to try and maybe turn this one around. And with uh, the, the DMAT coming through onto the Diva of Illusion, it does look as if... It will be a, a win here for console rookies as they take that point control back. Yeah, um, I think that it all really fell apart when Hort started, decides to charge uh, uh, Ritzy. He gets boot back and then taken out before he can actually collide with something. So yet again, you're out with, without a main tank. And without a main tank, it's really hard. But that fight was so scrappy. There was picks like before the fight had even begun. And now we're going to see an incredibly quick engage here for console rookies. 
yeah, I mean, console rookies, they want to try and take this presence onto Illusion Solar here, but that being said, Stownag already quite low on HP, and the slam gets dropped down. Pure Satter manages to lay that one into the enemy team. It looks like a flip will potentially come through here as the cleanup just comes through onto that McCree, who is very far away, I'll mention that. I think three three letters is all I have to describe there, uh, MTD. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, well, it was a nice shatter. Set up for your team. Um, yeah, you can't really do much if you're lying on the ground. So, going to this next fight, Contour Rookies have four ultimates online, and you've only got two. Yeah, the high uh, noon, though, from the McCree. Can get something done here from afar. Does a lot of damage, but doesn't get the picks, and it's KMS1 and NWD instead to really take the spotlight there in terms of getting those first picks. So the, the Ryan and the Baptiste gone. It's looking tragic here, potentially, for Illusion. That being said, they're coming back with picks. They take out Fantasy. They take out NWD as well. So again, it's just a very scrappy fight where both of these teams are trading picks off. But the Reinhardt returns here now for Illusion, so maybe can make a bit of a difference. So High Noon also cleans up onto Ritzy. Now it's looking die here for console rookies. I was talking about the, um, the ultimate dis differential there. Uh... I think what uh, Illusion did really well there is play the fight slowly so that the console, so the uh, differential didn't matter. They built the ultimates so they could use them. Uh, long scrappy fights is what we're going for here and with the Riptar it might be uh -huh. different this time. NWD actually comes up with two picks there so that just uh, dominantly wins the fight, right? I mean they had two picks already but kind of drives it home for them there. But our console rookies is 40% and they've got to win two or three team fights in a row now. You do have to win that, and you got no ultimates online. You got the amplification matrix and a shatter potentially here for horse starter. So illusion really have the advantage going to this next fight. Uh, the fight after, however, could be swung towards console rookies. So I see them winning this fight. They have a potential for the next fight, and they could snowball it further on. We're just gonna wow. see. We shall see. The, the shield already down here for Stownag, so it has to be super careful. But it gets frozen up. If that immortality field dies, they go down. And Pachief is traded out here, so there's no May on the board, kind of losing a little bit of that sustain that you gain from it. But now the high ground presence is all here for Illusion. They lay down the slam onto Ritzy in KMS1. They decide to take out Ritzy first. Of course, that target focus is always nice to take out that Lucio. But now it's looking dire. Console rookies, I mean, it's last fight territory, and they have to come up with a clutch play. NWD wants to try and make that as they take out two here, in fact. Gonna be using that tire as well. Bomb comes through onto the point, but it doesn't find anything. And in fact, it's NWD who comes up with two more picks. That's a 4k in this fight, and they look to be maybe winning this round out here, even, for console rookies. These long drawn out fights have really come to the advantage here for uh, console rookies. You've just got to go Wrecking Ball to contest here, and now your composition's all kind of messed up. Cole gets taken out. And the yeah, and Chief this, gets caught in a Riptide, not a Riptide. This Bull Diva really is not great to deal with. You know, the, the B, the Bomb, all that kind of stuff you'll get here from console rookies. Lucent and Hijort Sator are already down. Um, and of course, it looks like it'll just be clean up here. Console rookies, they're not going to lose a fight like this. Yeah, the, you really don't have any chance of winning that fight and to swap to the Wrecking Ball. Uh, you just, you've got no ultimate online. You've got no real way. To do anything uh, a bit unfortunate there because i feel like if they took the la the previous fight a little bit quicker they might have had time but with these long drawn out fights i think we've seen the entirety of about five fights that map which is incredibly low for a 99 to 99 yeah i mean it you know the first fight was was like what 30 40 percent long and then every other fight after that was also considerably long seems like these two teams are very evenly matched in terms of you know their engages and as well as just the mechanical ability, right? We're seeing people pop off, Fantasy, NWD, Juicy, always getting those picks. Uh, yeah, we're seeing great uh, individual ability here. I feel like the problem at the moment is the fact that everyone's just sort of all over the place. It looks like Call of Duty. <laughs> is Overwatch, I mean... Yeah, I think we're casting the wrong game here, Sam, I'll tell you that much, but... I mean, now I we have a monkey, up... which I, I don't think you see a monkey in Call of Duty, do you? <laughs> no. Uh, you got double bubble here, um, which you really want to go aggressive here. But with the brawl composition going so far up right onto the monkey, they're going to struggle to coordinate any sort of dive here. Yeah, and with Azari just getting pummeled around by the Reinhardt there, and Staunag, you know, not able to do anything. A monkey can't, you know, force anyone away like a Reinhardt might be able to. So that's a disadvantage of playing this monkey into the brawl. And... Point cap immediately comes through there for Illusion. We're not going to see a swap off though, however. We're going to stick with this monkey composition. 
It's a little bit easier on the attack as you don't have to hold space. You just try and take it as quick as possible. Um, key ultimates here are probably going to be Baptisim uh, Amplification Matrix or Lucerne. Yeah, and what interests me here is that they're running a Junker out with a double bubble, right? I mean, it's, it kind of protects the back line, but it doesn't do much in terms of helping with a dive. Either way, you see some aggression coming through there and Illusion. They have to back off. Junkrat spam is actually working out here as it's just pumping in the damage and really forcing everyone back. But two players down here, Fantasy and Ritzy, do end up getting taken out. Those KMS ones, so it looks like the uh, Junkrat spam not able to save the console rookies from that just barrage of damage that came through from the McCree and the May. Yeah, this is just... Okay, we're going to go for a pause real quick. Yeah, I assume. I, w I would assume we're going for a pause. Um... <laughs> the teams are uh, asking for a pause. Bit pause. Uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? I guess we're okay. just going to let them put in percentage tick up. This is brilliant. <laughs> All right, there we go. 20% later. Uh, yeah, I think we have a slash hide chat for our uh, host, I think, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I reckon so. But either way, I mean... This Junkrat, what, what do you think of it? I didn't really like it too much, to be honest. Not particularly. Uh, he played Junkrat on the last map. It works a little bit more in Brawl on Mecha base, but if if all of this uh, Flex DPS can play as Junkrat, that could cause some real problems adapting to different comps because you can't really run it with a double bubble. Yeah. I mean, uh, NWD has, has looked stellar on the Junkrat, right? We, we, can, give, we can give them that. Given that, you know, they got a 4k in the last round, they were also doing really well on it, uh, just in the neutral. But, I, I I mean, you just can't get an engage through unless you go for, like, some weird tire dive, right? Yeah. I mean, you could use a, a rip tire as a part of a dive, I guess. That could feasibly happen. But you don't get rip tire enough to realistically make that a viable option. You've got mines think... as well. I mean, you can just, you know, yeah. get in there, but the escape route just isn't there. Yeah, you can get in. Uh, getting out's a little bit of a different story. Um, I've not seen too many picks go the way of console rookies this team. Uh, this map. No, not specifically in this round. I would say this round. I mean, they, yeah. I. The thing I is, feel like this, this is Junkrat. You'd expect them to, right? Yeah, you got to pick up on Decol. Uh, but that was when you were disengaging. You've not really got anything on the engage. I feel like the focus fire from the team is either not possible with the team composition they're running, or just not coordinated enough, because realistically, at least someone should have fallen. Yeah, for sure, but I mean, the thing is with, with the double bubble dive as well, you're not really playing as much for picks, you're playing for space and, and to allow your, your DPS to then, later on in the fight, really make use of the enemy not having any cooldowns, and when you have a Junkrat instead of like an Echo or, or a McCree, like that, I mean, one, it, you know, it's less protection for the backline, but two, I mean, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the later kind of uh, less cooldowns in the fight. And now you're 60%. If you really want to swap, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle, to say the least. Yeah. No, I I, I mean, personally, I, I've never understood how teams play the dive into the uh, the Reinhardt competitions. I guess you really play for high ground, but where, where's the high ground in this map, right? Yeah, there is not really any high ground on this map. But it doesn't mean that Double Bubble's entirely impossible, but it's more no. traditional on... Uh, it's not the street phase. The one with the train going through it. Yeah, that one is a, a lot easier for Double Bubble. You get a lot of uh, vantage points. You can put like a, maybe a Junkrat on a high ground at that point, but when you have to play on flat ground, Junkrat doesn't become as easy to play. On this map, uh, you usually see some teams run like a Wrecking Ball composition, but... We've not really seen that here. Or even like a long range hit scan like a Widowmaker, because some of the angles you can get here it can yeah. be really nice. We also but... do have a, an update on, on what's happening with the teams as well. Uh, I believe one of them spilled water over their uh, their, their gaming setup. So we'll ah. have to sort that one out for a, a while. <laughs> uh, I heard a. I was in a scrum once and uh, someone had to go because they spilled uh, ramen <laughs> like all over their computer and their computer had like broken. Wow. So uh, they had to find a ringer. So hopefully we don't have to uh, find a ringer. Their PC is still running, which is good. Yeah, no, they, it appears like they are ready. Uh, both okay. teams, in fact. So hopefully we're going back in very shortly. Um, hopefully that water doesn't, like, you know, short circuit their PC or something. 
Yeah, hopefully we're not like halfway through a dive and the monkey just disappears from the team fight. <laughs> yeah, the, you just you just get like the fear of, of having the monkey dive in, but then the monkey just <laughs> Fano snaps out of there. Oh, but either way, yeah, I mean this is it's looking dire for console rookies here. I want to see what can happen with the pulse bomb and riptire for console rookies here, and you've also got a nano monkey. And they're gonna use the riptire, so they're going for the riptire dive that we were talking about before, unironically. See if it guess anything here. I mean, the tire movement's good from NWD. Trying to get in there, <laughs> making their way all the way across that point. Doesn't actually get any picks with it, though. Instead, just deals the damage. The Primal Rage, though, gonna be going in alongside the Tracer in the backline to try and get some picks. But the Peel comes through as a 1,000 HP drained in a couple of seconds. Really good stuff there to recognize that that monkey is a threat. And now the Zarya has to be nanoed up to try and get some damage in. But the bomb is invested to take them out. That's an ultimate for an ultimate there, but it goes in the favor here of Illusion. As they'll just clean up on this fight, get that point control back, and now it's 81% and counting. Uh, it's down uh, the console player's main tank. He made an immense amount of space going in with his Primal Rage, the Nano Boost as well. Um, but they couldn't sustain the amount of space. They just crumbled in. And it leaves Illusion with 95% here. And realistically, you've got to touch the point quickly. Yeah, it is fantasy that does get onto that point in the back line, so... You know, able to proc that overtime, but now, I mean, Ritzy, Fancy, both down. It's up, to, it's up to everyone to just follow up on that Graviton Surge that finds basically nothing there for KMS1. It was a, an ice block to May. That was all you got inside of it. So now I just take out Lucent here, but it's not really going to matter too much as uh, it looks like it will just be the cleanup coming through for Illusion. And they bite back with a round win of their own. Uh, I, I bite back definitely. I think maybe, like, lacerate back. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was more brutal than that. It just came back, like, it looked like a completely different game. Um, I think partly down to the composition choices here. If you're going to run double bubble, it would work here if it was going to run anywhere. But I think they're going to stick with the dive, which, uh, stick with the brawl, which I think is smart. Yeah, considering that you've seen Illusion only play the, the brawl, and I mean, console rookies have been the one flexing over to other comps. I think you just take the mirror here if you're confident in that. I mean, they did win uh, Mecha Base, which was that brawl mirror map, so. Are we going to see some uh, spicy sim TPs here? Like with some weird routing? Maybe. I don't know. I'm assuming so. O unless it's just to get to the point, but I don't think Juicy realizes you have to step out the spawn room to set down that TP. So <laughs> it kind of slows them down more than anything on that uh, that rollout. And console rookies are the one with the, I, I would say, better positioning here as they just rotate over to the point. Taking a bit of that presence, but they're giving up the high ground here, which is what the Junkrat usually likes to have. So unless the plan here is to disrupt someone off of that high ground with their minds, I'm not entirely sure what this is about, but I mean, it's it's up to whether Illusion really, you know, w work this one in as uh, May gets trapped up there in the ice block. Doesn't actually get taken out though, as uh, Hjort goes for a, a massive pin actually, catches the Reinhardt and takes him down. So, really good stuff now. It's a very scrappy fight, I'll tell you that much. But the tie has already been built up here for NWD. Almost takes down that Reinhardt just on one sliver of HP and taken down. It looks like here console rookies will get that initial point cap. I'm surprised Junkrat managed to build his ultimate that quickly with a D.Va as well. From low ground um, as well. Yeah, from low ground as well. And he didn't even have the high ground. It, yeah, it's it's in insane the amount of work he's getting done on Junkrat. I think they should just stick with this brawl because it really wasn't working with the dive. But um, now we're going to see Illusion. They want to rotate round to point here, maybe. Which is what they're going to do. And they've got the speed boost. So they might be able to take it quickly. But the high ground's now in the, the favor of the junk rat. Well, the amplification matrix comes out, so no one's really going to want to be peeking at that one. That being said, Fancy going on a very nice off angle here, looking to flank onto the enemy McCree. They kind of duel each other out, but it is Juicy that loses out instead. Stalnag, though, traded out, so it's not too bad here for either team. Um, as Alusha just comes into the backline, trying to peel for Fantasy here. Fan the Hammer comes through, though, onto that May, and now the High Noon should be able to drive this one home. Fantasy is doing absolute work here. Found three picks, if you include that Diva mech, and they'll, you know, flip this one back over. I think the, the only reason they won that fight is just each individual member just popped off. Yeah. Um, KMS, um, they did, like, the uh, 2018 Diva Bomb thing, where you, you, you use it standing still and then just push it over the edge. Oh, yeah. Didn't get any kills, but it was nice to see. Uh, this fight, though, we're going to see a lot of ultimates for both teams here. Cole and Ritzy are both going to have their um, boots online. Yeah. 
This could make it extremely scrappy. The fights could last a long time and every ultimate could potentially come online. Well, Slam misses there for Jaw, and the Eat comes through onto the the male. That's two ultimates denied there. And I mean, Illusion, they don't have much more to work with. They use that B to try and sustain themselves through. And they get a pick onto Naru. Slam comes through there and it catches the Diva. So Sosanae gonna be getting taken out of that mech. And NWD with a tire has found two. So it looks like console rookies have the advantage here and Jaw is just gonna jump off the map. Yeah, I think with that pick onto Juicy, Lizzie's so late on into the fight. It's going to be a struggle to touch here uh, for every single member. R Reinhardt's just spawned, and he's realistically not going to get to the point before it reaches 100%. So someone's going to have to stick the leg out and touch. Well, I would assume it'd be Chief on the Doomfist here, right? You have that mobility. You can get there in time, potentially. Or the Diva, as yep, has been procced here. The overtime at Wick is available. But now the High Noon from Fancy. Going to zone everyone off that point. Takes down the Doomfist. NWD, however, has been traded out, but it doesn't matter too much. Console Rookies, they still got the numbers advantage here in this team fight. They will end up winning out this round, unless that Baptiste can find a 6k. And, I mean, unlike the people in my plat games, probably isn't going to happen. Yeah, in an effort to touch there, you have to play split. And unfortunately, you just can't sustain that for a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so it just sort of collapses in on itself. And Console Rookies take it 2-1 to one after a shaky second round, may I add. Yeah, I think it was more of a compositional difference, but well played to them to realize that they should just go back to that brawl, recognizing that Illusion prefer that style, and then, uh, you know, winning it out on that downtown map. And here you'll see as well the uh, the, the amazing shadow from Jort Sater there. Really good stuff. I think uh, the spearhead, I guess, for console rookies there. Uh, do the losers get to choose the map? Uh, yes, I believe it's loser pick. Okay, and what's the next map type? Uh, I, 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 I'm not entirely sure because last time we had, uh, we had cough hybrid and then cough again. So I think oh. it's, there's, it's two of, it's two things. It's either, you know, that order or it's just a random order and people can choose whatever they want. Okay. So cough hybrid, um, or if you're going payload, I reckon you go for like a Gibraltar or something and then you just have to force console rookies onto a non brawl composition. And I want to see how they adapt to that if illusion do choose a map that's not exactly the best for a broad composition because that's what i fear for console rookies here yeah i mean nwd has not swapped off that junkrat right i think they want to put uh, nwd on that just because either they're extremely proficient on the hero or maybe they just don't have the flexibility maybe on busan to play other heroes uh, of that kind so uh, i mean honestly if console rookies get forced off of a composition where they can play the junkrat I think that's where Illusion will really find their groove. Exactly. I couldn't have worded it better myself, I don't think. Um, uh, I, yeah, we're just waiting for the teams to choose. We're the just map. waiting for the teams to pick a map. Yeah, I, 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 honestly, I'm not entirely sure what. But, I mean, if it's... Uh, we, we have seen... We saw Blizzard World in the previous series. And that is a map that, I think, on third point you can play Junkrat. But the other two... Hell no. I don't think you can play Junkrat there. Blizzard World's like quite weird as a map as it really doesn't favor one composition. It favors lots of different compositions across the map. So Yeah. Oh, we're going to Gibraltar. You know, you know, people people oh, say it's well, gonna be bad. Oh yeah. Uh, and people say like, you know, King's Row is like the best map in terms of like diversity. You can play uh Arissa, you can play Reinhardt there, right? Um, but I, I would disagree, and I'd say Blizzard World's a very diverse map in terms of what you can play. You see some teams play Dive on offense, you see some teams play Brawl on offense, You've, I've seen teams play Arissa Sigma Bastion on offense, right? There's a ton of different stuff you can play on Blizzard World um, as a map, but of course we are not on Blizzard World, like you said, we are on Gibraltar. Um, and Gibraltar oh, is... hybrid is next, so we're not on Gibraltar. Oh, hybrid is next, so we're not on Gibraltar. These teams are... Uh, Papega. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... I think, well, I, even we didn't know what the map choosing situation is so no, yeah it is a bit uh interesting but hang on. i need to read the rules i, I think we do yeah <laughs> yeah faster. yeah it'd be a, it'd be a good idea but I, I certainly think that okay yeah blizzard world so thankfully everything i said isn't a void and they have picked blizzard world they have picked blizzard world that's nice um here i think the problem here for illusion solar is it's still very i mean prominent on defense to run a brawl you yeah. occasionally see a double shield, but having the brawl here uh, for console rookies available as a composition really 
should scare Illusion Solo, as they would be 2-0 down if they lose this. They really want to win it. Although, yeah. I suppose, even if you win this one, they then get to choose the, the payload map. So, realistically, that, I think the control point may have won it for console rookies if they continue their dominance on the brawl composition. Yeah, certainly. And uh, I think as well, I, Blizzard World, I mean, is probably the best option you could pick here if you are um, Illusions E Solar. The other options are like, you know, King's Row and, and stuff like that. Maybe you could have Nimbani? picked like some Nimbani, yeah, maybe. Um, oh, but, but I, think, I don't like I think, the pro I think the problem with that is that Illusion, the problem with them is that they actually tend towards playing the uh, the Brawl compositions themselves. So they won a Brawl map, I would reckon, right? Yeah, it's a really hard conundrum here for Illusion Solar. Um, and we, we do have subs coming in. I don't know anything about the players, but KMS is out and uh, Swiss Unit is in kms was playing a zari was playing zaria and diva which suggests maybe they want to run a dive composition here if you're swapping out the off tank yeah i mean you're swapping the off tank you're also swapping oh. kms back in for nwd so we're seeing kms come over onto dps and so that's a role swap so we've seen kms on zaria and now we'll see them they won't on... be limited by the junk rat now yeah they're, they're not they're not forced into that so maybe potentially you do see some some dive here Maybe. I believe we've, we've just gone in on the wrong map. We're on Busan again. We're on Busan again. It's not the greatest thing ever. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's intentional, but hey-ho. <laughs> oh, this, this, is, this is a game and a half, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is only the second game that we've casted. Crap, that's my camera done. Oh, you can probably see that. I am so sorry, stream. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, okay, we're on Blizzard World now. Finally, we're here, um, and yeah, this is this is the correct map. You know, this is the uh, you love the the music soundtrack. You love the uh, the nice scenes you can see in Blizzard World, and also potential for brawl here. I'm not looking at the scenes. I'm looking at the game. Oh no, I'm I'm here for the scenery, man. I mean, have, have you have you seen the views? Yeah, it is relatively nice, but I have my graphics on like the lowest they can be, so it just sort of looks like a PS2 game. Dang, I mean that's uh... a. <laughs> That's a that's a low graphics moment right there. I can I can at least run mine on on high. I think with like six. I can run mine on high, but like I want 140, I 44 FPS. Fair enough. I think these teams would also want that to be honest. Higher FPS. Also, I might right. get the football up. Do I do that? You're gonna watch football while watching Overwatch? Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I don't care that much. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's uh this professional thing ever, but <laughs> you do you, I guess, but. I mean, here we get into the game and we see the compositions and we see the dive on offense, like I was mentioning. I do like the double shield. It's my favorite composition just because it's like, it's slow and methodical and it forces you to think about every decision you make. Oh, you've... <laughs> Let's not start like a composition war here, but double shield, your favorite composition? Wow, it's I, I'm a Sigma main. Okay, that's understandable. That's understandable. And you got the double bubble here and I really... I really like Double Bubble as well. They're my two favorite compositions. Just because yeah. of how diverse and team oriented they are, they are. You can't really run them in comp. So seeing them in like a tournament environment is just a nice sight. Yeah, well, we do see the uh, Arisa go burr here for console rookies. Not playing any Brawl, not playing any Junkrat. And I mean, this roll swap is going to be interesting, right? I wanted, I'm really curious to see how KMS will perform on the Hanzo, a very mechanical hero. Compared to that Diva or the Zarya that we saw him on before, which are very tracking based heroes. So we'll end up Illusion. seeing what happens here. Yeah, Illusion is just sitting up on this high ground. They're gonna wait for an opportunity to dive in. And there we go, there's the opportunity to dive in. Trace is behind and you're gonna brawl KMS. Yeah, so this duel's actually happening right now as KMS almost getting one for one by Tracer, but wins the duel against Juicy. So really good stuff there, but I mean, it doesn't quite really matter as two players have gone down here for console rookies and the nano comes through onto the monkey. So a, a very swift nano, I would say here, coming through. And I might be able to get the picks you need to crack this one open potentially. But it, it doesn't matter. KMS just dumping in the headshots, getting a ton of damage in there. Just get taken down towards the end by McGonagall. Um, but it does look like there is some stabilization happening here potentially for console rookies. Being said, Juicy's back though. Let's take out Ritzy. So once again, the fight rages on in a scrappy way like we saw in Busan. It looks like Illusion want to take this one slowly, though. They're giving up a little bit of space. 
Yeah, they're not going to opt for the high ground this time, and the bongo's going to be used. They're going to be uh, uh, probably safe to just back up here and not engage. Maybe just build up some nano boost charge. And that's a nice dragon there. Um, yeah, does a lot of damage to horse starter. Uh, what I want to say is he wants to look at KMS and how he was doing, and he was doing an immense amount of work. And taking him out there is going to be invaluable, especially as Tracer stops the uh, res coming through. Yeah, and I mean, this Ash on defense as well, Fantasy, can just hold these angles and really deny Juicy some space as well, is what I want to say. But for that damage boost from Mercy, it's really good. The dive comes through the coach gun onto Jort, so unable to really dive in. And instead, there's just a ton of ultimates invested here, Valk, Flux, and Bob. And in fact, Window as well here for console rookies. They really want to win this one. Take out Juicy, so it's a good start for them, as well as Lucerne. So the Primal Rage won't matter too much here for Jort, as healing is there. Um, and in fact, AMS, yeah, absolutely it, mental. I think he's just got yeah. three picks in that fight. All of them headshot, I think. Apart, or maybe one of them not headshot. Anyway, that was two of them that were headshot kills. He's just doing an immense amount of damage. He's going to be looking at another dragon here after using it at the beginning of that fight. Yeah, really good stuff. And in fact, you know, ends up taking the duel against the Tracer as well. KMS has been winning those duels critically as well. Yeah, and uh, it's not usually something you see with the, the blooming uh, the Honda. Oh. Can't be standing um, there, Susan. Hey, Jesus Christ. Dinked up. Yeah. Out of existence, no more. Well, back to the spawn room for you. Here you can have the nano boost onto monkey and a, a graviton surge. So you don't really use them together, but individually they are potentially winning ultimates here. But you do have a bongo, which is probably one of the best tank on ultimates, arguably. And KMS with the uh, dragon. Uh, the thing is, though, call is big... down, right? You can't be yep. standing in direct line of sight of the Hanzo spam. You can't be doing that. <laughs> Yeah, this is a problem with double shield, is it's just so strong at longer ranges. You really don't want to take any excess damage before you engage, but with the uh, with DPS like this, it's really hard not to take damage before you go in. Yeah, and KMS has a really good angle as well, can just spam the damage in alongside that Ash. McGonagall, though, takes him out, so getting rid of the problem themselves, taking things into their own hands, finds Fantasy as well. This is a clutch play we might need here from Illusion, as they just clean up into that Graviton Surge very swiftly, and... Really good stuff there. No chance the console rookies win this scrappy fight. Yeah, that was a nice fight. They had to use every ultimate they had online to do it. But, uh, well, you have to because it's the last fight you possibly can win. Oh, the cap, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, KMS, though. Um, we were complimenting him so much that McGonagall's like, yeah, you can compliment me for a minute. They just uh, get two picks, open that first team fight, and Sigma here on his own could get dove out of existence. Oh, but Swiss unit has that immortality field, so we'll be able to stay alive. Fantasy actually very scared of that primal rage, so backing up Swiss unit. Still somehow alive in that front line, but Ritzy is the one to go down instead. McGonagall coming up with that first pick once again. Um, and Cole goes down here, so it looks like console rookies, they want to bite back, and they'll start taking some space here, in fact, with this Arista Sigma composition to try and get towards that payload. KMS goes down, though. McGonagall once again removing the issue, and the, the Valk has to come through here to at least try and win the fight here for Illusion. They're going to go aggressive with that one, and the monkey actually dives in, almost gets taken out by Fantasy, so it has to be just mega careful. You can't you be diving straight boost, ahead yeah. in. And yeah, the nano boost can come in. through. Dives in, gets into the back line. Fantasy taken out there, the dive with the tracer as well. Really good stuff. And if I had to say something, I, I think this team fight is won here for Illusion. The bongo comes through, but I mean, you've just got so much high ground control. That was a really nice bongo as it forced uh, console rookies to back off. Now the flux is going to come out, but it doesn't yeah. find anything. Let's pop into the back, but the flick shot actually comes through onto Juicy. I don't know if we caught that one on stream, but I wish we did. That was a really good shot from KMS. It cleans up alongside the rest of console rookies, so they're making me eat my words when I try to call out the winner of that team fight, and it goes the complete opposite way. Yeah, the bongo forced uh, everyone for Illusion to back off, and then you just have the flux come out. It picks onto three, I think. I don't know why I said it didn't connect onto anyone. It connects onto three, does half their health, and then KMS just comes in and clears it up. So... Now you've only got 45 seconds here. You've got no real chance of getting a nano boost online here. So you're going to have to rely on Bob and Grav and a, a Mercy all, realistically. Yeah. The high ground rotation here from Illusion. So they're going to try and, and maybe dive from a high ground or like just drop down. Maybe no. They're, they're deciding what they want to do. They're debating us as casters. But alas, I mean, it's 20 seconds remaining. They're going to have to have someone maybe touch that payload later on. They actually are already on it, so... Um, KMS going to try and take that duel against the Tracer on the payload. Um, so they're just the looking for an opportunity to go in. 
Yeah, force to drop from uh, Sigma. Yeah, and he's now actually the dive. Up. Yeah, the dive comes in. Jort gonna be using that primal rage. Juicy gets taken out though, so KMS once again winning that duel. Cole goes down as well, so it's looking tragic here for Illusion. They need to try and find a clutch play somewhere. Sursene is so close to like Graviton's Surge. Has it online, so can use it, but they die with the Graviton Surge. That could have been so good if they had some sort of ultimate there to use, but Sursene had it up too late. And it looks like console rookies end it right there on uh, halfway through the second point. Illusion Z Solar. They split into two groups of three, which is like a nice thing you want to do when you're doing dive. They had one up on the high ground and one coming behind. And KMS is just like single man army, manages to take out the three members that weren't with the monkey. Yeah. Really clinical here from uh, console rookies. They, I think their target focus and their rotations are really good against a double bubble, right? Usually a double bubble, well executed, can break a double shield. Um, if you you know have a good target focus, but one I think Illusion don't have that target focus, and two I think that KMS as well as everyone else on uh, console rookies just really good at picking off certain targets that are unprotected at the right times. Uh, this man was also playing uh, tank a game ago, so <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Yeah, um, now we're gonna see. I was gonna say yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna see a double bubble or a double shield that they were just deciding. And we see a double uh, double shield composition here on the defense and then a double bubble on attack again. The key difference here, though, is the DPS line. KMS was teasing the Genji now over to the Reaper. Okay, yeah, I think we're going to see it. They're just trying yeah. to debate us. <laughs> they they, they might be. Yeah, but you see a McCree Ash here on the defense, which... It's not too bad. Not too bad, yeah, but... Usually you'd see like a Hanzo instead. I, I think the, 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 the McCree Ash here with the double shield, the point of it is to deny like maybe like an echo that can just come to the backline and one shot your, your backline, right? I think that's what they were predicting here. Instead you see the Genji though from KMS like you were saying. Yeah, um, as long as I can build Graviton Surge here, you can have a win condition with the Nano Blade. Certainly, and uh, I mean there are some off angles being taken here. Cersei and I actually getting zoned off by a singular honor, so quite scared there, but I mean, now Storm and I are going to be looking to, I, I was going to say go forward, but they just jump straight back. They can't endure all the spam from the double shield. Just so much of it coming in. They're trying to find a spot to engage. Satang tried to dive in the first time, but he got halted away. He doesn't get halted away this time. He's going to jump successfully onto the high ground here. It's going to allow the rest of his team to push in onto the Eraser on low ground. Yeah, the Baptiste loses the high ground, so they can't access everyone at once. That means that Cersei and Jork can just go down immediately. KMS just dashing through everyone. Like a ninja. I mean, you know, Genji is a ninja, is a ninja. so it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was really well played. Santang, unfortunately, the first dive he couldn't get in because of the halt from a uh, horse data, but he just dives in on the back line. He gets support. He's got his bubble a little bit safe. Force everyone off the, uh, the high ground, and everyone on low ground gets taken out, and then it, it's beautifully executed from there. Now we're going to come into this next fight. We're going to have an, a, a nano boost and potentially a blade. Realistically, you don't have anything to deal with it apart from an immortality field, but that is only short-lived in the protection from a nanoblade. Yeah, I mean, this uh, nanoblade is hard to deal with here from uh, Illusion. I think that they're gonna have to be, like get creative with how they they deal with it. Um, but I think KMS just wants to build it up, and that's what they're waiting on for the engage here. Yeah, and I reckon they're gonna use a pulse bomb to get rid of the immortality field. Wait. Cersei is flanking on Hog. Cersei is in the back line. Actually, gets zoned off here by the core as uh, Trade comes out on the DPS line. McGonagall and KMS both taken out, so no Nana Blade available for this fight. And it'll just be a dry kind of dive here from Stornag. In fact, gets a Nana Boost, so no longer as dry as it was before. Not sure if they'll be able to get any picks off this. In fact, they use the Primal Rage, so they want to try and commit for this. I'm not entirely sure why. The High Noon comes through, but the Payload is still pushing. There has to be some cart presence from Illusion, but they're just going to get destroyed in that Graviton like Surge. That. Swiss unit, right place, right time there. Takes them out, and the Bongo has to be used from Jort to try and make a clutch play onto this Payload, but no one's touching it. The Orisa has to be the one to get onto it. KMS Fancy taken out right now, so potentially losable for the side of console rookies. The jaw gets taken out here, and the cart presence is all but gone. So this snake's just trying to desperately stay on it. Gets a hook off onto the brick, so will be taken down quite low. Ritzy has to back off. But so Sisney now being taken down means that it's looking tragic here for uh, for Illusion. Oh, pardon me. Um, you do see a re re return here for no Illusion. Way. They take no. out two. 
Oh my god, Stornag and Ritzy gone down. Juicy gets traded out onto here, so once again, it's still a very, very scrappy fight, but... I mean, I, I would be inclined to say the console rookies still have a chance. Fantasy can use that pulse bomb if they want to clean this up in an instant. They use it onto the hog. It ends up taking them down as well with just some neutral yet. shots. And Fantasy is going wild. Found like four picks towards the end there. And console rookies get carried by them. Put on their backs. Console rookies DPS line have got to be the highlight here. Their team play, it's, it's great. But their DPS line, we're going to look at a play of the game from KMS here. Um, yeah. And we're just going to see the insane mechanics here from the uh, DPS line here. Yeah, and what a good dragon. I mean, aiming it towards the car, so it just zones everyone off there. And this is kind of what ended the fight for them here, in fact. Really good stuff from KMS. Yeah. Um. And I feel like when they had a problem, they just ulted and got rid of the problem. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, like, it lost the Genji, and the prerogative to invest ultimate when you know it's winnable, it... It's something a lot of teams wouldn't do. You wouldn't invest an ultimate when you just lost your Kenji for a Nano Blade, but Illusion, so, uh, but console rookies they did, and they managed to turn it around. Yeah, so like I, I was so them. surprised. Sorry to interrupt you there, but I was so surprised that one, the monkey continued to go in with Primal Rage after getting Nanoed, and secondly, I'm I'm so surprised the Swiss unit um, managed to get a Graviton Surge into that small room. Like that, that rotation must have taken so long to get into position, but I mean, right place, right time. Like I said, and. I mean, you're giving credit to DPS line here. I think it's also just maybe some shot calling from, I'm guessing, the front line of console rookies. It's really making it work for them. Yeah, the the shot calling seems to be doing... The shot caller, whoever it is, is doing a great job. Um, we're going to see a swap out here. Juicy uh, Lizzie, they were on the McCree, I believe. They swap it for Chief, who... Please have an open profile. <laughs> uh so okay, the, Echo, of Echo this current season. Okay, they're, 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 a, they're a flex DPS player. They're yeah, going to so... look far at Echo Genji. And considering we're on Dorado, I reckon Chief is in to play Dive, right? Illusion, they'll play some maybe Double Bubble, maybe some Winston Diva stuff, and throw an Echo in there, I reckon. If console rookies are looking like that on the Double Bubble with KMS in on uh, Hanzo, yeah. I think you're really <laughs> going to struggle here, uh, Illusion. So, uh, Illusion's Isola here. I mean, they're on the last legs, right? It's it's two up here for console rookies, so... I mean, they, Illusion, they have to find a win here. Yeah, you can't choose a... I think they look more comparable on the Brawl composition. So choosing Dorado here, I think... Maybe a less wise decision, but they got beat on the Brawl as well, so... I feel what you're comfortable at is... Guess what they're doing? They're choosing Dorado. Yeah, they end up going over to Dorado, and I mean, this is... So, like we said, we're expecting to see Dive here, expecting to see maybe Echo um, kind of stuff as, as Chief comes in here. Um, and critically as well, I want to mention um, that there's a ton of subs here for console rookies. They've gotten rid of their, ma their original main tank, bringing in Gerbil instead, and Naru is now in on the support line. Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone just seems to be able to play everything here. Um... Uh, yeah. We've not started the game yet, so... There we go. There we go. Yeah, We're I'm gonna... not sure what to think about all the subs when they just succeeded with a roster that was very, just, impactful. You're two maps up. Uh, if you lose the map next map realistically, you could do a lot worse, uh, realistic, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it would it would take a reverse sweep here for, for Illusion to win this, so I, I reckon, yeah, you're right, I reckon just experiment around console rookies, they can put some of their maybe benched players in for a bit of playtime, you know? Yeah, I know uh, I am not exactly this high SR, but uh, I was playing in like a plat gold sort of tournament, and uh, my team managed to get two reverse sweeps in the tournament. Yeah, then no. The thing is, though, people people think of reverse sweeps like they're uncommon. They're they're not uncommon by any means. They're very much possible, especially with how close some games are. Like maybe not this game, right? I mean, we've not like in the first two maps, it's not been too close. But if this was closer, I'd say like definitely it's reverse sweepable. It's reverse sweepable. You hear McGonagall on the uh, junk rat and Zarya just trying to get some damage in before it begins. <laughs> and the, the cheeky hole. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. No, but we see the wrecking ball diva here, which is. An incredibly uh, pop-off focus comp with the DPS you run here. Yeah, and, and it's, KMS. It's, 
popping off, finds a headshot onto Chase straight away. Yeah, it's for both teams here, the, the Bull Diva, so they're looking to just, I'm guessing, commit hard onto each other's back lines and hope, hope to God that they get the picks off of it. Assuming that's what this is about, is uh, we'll see Chief going down here, KMS hitting another nasty shot, so really good stuff. And can just sit on this high ground and really, you know, have free reign. Does get booped off by the ball eventually there. Um, and, and Gerbil and Hijot Sator aren't really going to be, you know, seeing much of each other. They're just going to be in each other's back lines as Jort does take out Fancy. Straight on to McGonagall and the Tracer there, but I think console rookies, they're happy to just stand strong here. Amos is brutal if he can't be dealt with, but he does get dealt with. And now it's going to allow for Illusion to just take the point here. Yeah, that Illusion. First... Sorry, just go on. No, I was going to say that first fight, it looked a little bit scrappy. You lose the Farah twice. But then you sort of adapt, and then you, you take out KMS, and now the FAR can get a lot of work done, which they're definitely doing. Is there 83 yeah. to a barrage? No, like, that, that's the point I was going to make. I, I'm saying, like, when KMS goes down, like, that is ideal for Illusion. So that's the main target they want to be diving onto and taking out. Um, but KMS still, you know, completely safe and sound and has a, a very good angle right now to actually dump in some damage. Does get solo mines there by the ball, who's just desperately trying to deal with them, and... Uh, I mean, they use the bob to try and stay alive here. KMS somehow, just on a sliver of HP, taken out there by Cole, but Lucent traded out, and Gerbil, what on earth is that? Just rolls through the mines, gets like a 3k out of it. Really good stuff there. Uh, I'm I'm assuming Gerbil is a stinky ball one trick, uh, based on their name. <laughs> yeah. No, just, just based on their name, because uh, why would you call an account Gerbil if you Wait, want? Wait, that's five kills, there, though, with the, with the mines. Jesus. That That is one productive minefield. You usually use it as an area denial ult, but th this man just uses it as a kill everything ult. Yeah, a kill switch. Kill switch, yeah, but you do have the barrage here for Chief. The problem is, though, you have to get in close. With a D.Va, realistically, you're not going to get much value from it. So we're looking for a, pot, a nice diva bomb here or a good beat from Cold to really propel them in this next fight. But Gerbil getting taken out. Yeah, and the B comes through from Cole, so they want to get a really impactful engage here. Um, and KMS going down quite low, gets taken out here in Chief. From the high ground, can maybe spam in the damage, just get dealt with by the diva. But I think Swissuna is just going to lose the mech for the trouble of that. Just actually use the bomb, so once to try and zone off the Mercy and the Farah, the Tracer instead is the one that goes down. Not entirely sure how they picked up that pick, but... I mean, it happened there, and now KMS will be returning from spawn as Swiss unit wants to try and get a re-engage alongside Ber Ber Gerbil on the point. Um, but with Fancy being down, there's no real backline presence with that Tracer. The target focus here is basically just kill KMS and everyone else can wait as he gets taken out twice before Gerbil gets taken out for the first time in the fight. But now uh, the backup is going to happen. The high ground control will go the way of uh, Illusion here, I think. Which could be uh, really helpful here if you want to help deal with KMS. But no one's on point, though. Yeah, I mean, they're not pushing the point, but they're getting the kills, right? Let's see, you know, just get, gets taken down towards the end here. And for some reason, console rookies are still showing their faces against this far, uh, despite the amount of spam that, that Chief is just putting in. KMS swaps over to the McCree. I uh, presume that's the better deal with McGonagall. Oh, but Fantasy has it under control. Yeah. Fantasy takes on McGonagall there, so McCree not even needed, and now they can just dink up the Farah. Gets two shots off there, and uh, I mean, it's looking good here now. Console rookies, they can start making their way onto that payload and regaining control of it. These picks are great, as they they probably know that five ultimates are online. And to get the picks off before the ultimates can be used is vital, because you can't win the fight. If you have such an odd disadvantage and going into this next fight, their ultimates will be able to come online and they'll probably be similar ultimate wise. Oh. And that's a beautiful headshot onto Chief. Those were some nasty shots and the res can't even come through because the disruption will be there. Lucent though somehow manages to get it through despite the mines from Gerbil. Chief and Cole though taken down immediately. KMS doing it again. You know, you, you res up the Farah, but KMS doesn't run out of ammo. So you can just keep getting those picks off and uh, console rookies, they're happy to just stay here on the car. They're playing as if the ultimates don't exist um, for Illusion here. She's had this barrage for so long, yeah. I know. Uh, I feel like Far is definitely hard here because with the Diva and the McCree of that caliber, it's really hard to get in there. But you would have thought you would have used it at least some point. Yeah, I mean, Chief, you can use it on like one or two people, right? You, like far away from the Diva and the McCree. If you get that opportunity, Ooh. you should use it. But Chief, taken down, can't use an ultimate when you're dead. And now... It's going to be Hort Sator as well. It goes down. And yet again, KMS takes out the, the Farah. I don't know what to tell you at this point. This man is just the carry of console rookies. 
found like three picks or something like that in a team fight. I mean, this is this is nasty. Uh, you have five ultimates online again. You just trade a minefield for a bait here. Um, you just need to use some ultimates here, realistically. You've got a nano boost and a mercy ult, a Valkyrie from uh, Ritzy, but you should be able to deal with it with five ultimates. Yeah. And now, I mean, KMS can just sit on this high ground, right? Unless this ball comes up to contest, then nothing's really going to happen. It looks like Chief might be preparing to posture for a barrage, but the Diva is there, making them aware of their presence. But nice. KMS goes down to the bomb. DMAC onto Swiss unit as well, so that might actually be the opportunity that Chief needs for a barrage, right? Diva's gone. McCree's gone, but does get res back up by Ritzy there. Fantasy, Fantasy goes down instead, but the barrage comes through onto KMS right as the high noon comes through. What a play from Chief. Takes down three players now, looking for a th fourth one as well. Guess a 5k stolen from them by uh, Cersei, but I mean, they'll be able to push this payload forward. They won't be able to push this payload forward, but you have one more team fight. And you've only got a pulse bomb remaining, and in the neutral fights, uh, console rookies just look absolutely dominant. So they're going to want to touch here. Oh, sure he oh, sorry to interrupt you there, but that was a rancid one clip by Fantasy. Triple blinks in, gets the one clip, just casually, you know, and, and gets a plus one to Cersei as well. That is, that's a, that's a Fantasy moment right there, if I've ever seen one. Jesus Christ, the res did come through onto McGonagall, but didn't matter in the end there. And that's where the payload's going to stop. Fantasy's absolutely brutal, and Gerbil there with just finishing off with a 2k mind. Yeah, oh, I mean, that I, is great. You have KMS popping off, you have Fantasy popping off. I, I struggle to see how you deal with this from uh, for, for Illusion. They Folks did push it a relatively <laughs> nice distance, though. And if you can play maybe like a, an aggressive brawl here to deny the DPS the space in which they can pop off in. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of, I, I, I don't want to call this chat, trash talk banter being exchanged in match chat currently, as uh, <laughs> they're just uh, talking about how NWD is better than KMS, which, I mean, I thoroughly disagree. <laughs> yeah, um, KMS is uh, one brutal man, although the Junkrat, I've not seen KMS is Junkrat, so. No, I yeah, mean... I mean, <laughs> imagine KMS just whips out the Junkrat right now. Stream sniping. <laughs> yeah. Um, Imagine. Speaking of uh, stream sniping, usually there's a little bit of delay. Oh, no, there probably is a little bit of delay. I'm no, there is. The yeah, it was, it was I'm looking at the Discord stream. Anything. Yeah. No, I was looking at the Discord stream, thought it was the actual stream. I was like, wait, we probably should delay that. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's no, me no, being no. an idiot. We got it, we got it. Don't worry. It was uh, more of a, a banter joke than anything. What, what on earth is a spot where people can just shoot over and get picks? Like, what? I got one in comp the other day. Um... Oh my god, that's nasty. Why hasn't that been patched yet? <laughs> I don't know, it's been it's been there for years. Well, that aside, now we get the actual game coming through here. A Widowmaker pick, actually, from KMS, but dove on to immediately buy the ball. Just get peeled for, in fact, and KMS trying to hit shots onto that Echo. This is going to force the positioning of Chief so much. Yeah, uh, Widowmaker, unlike a lot of heroes, just by existing gets value. Because no one wants to be in the line of sight of a Widowmaker, especially one of the caliber of KMS. 32% already, he's hitting yeah. some shots, scaring them enough to the point where they don't want to be standing out in the open. Yeah, the only other heroes I can think of that really command the presence that Widowmaker might be able to is like, you know, Sombra, maybe like some like Winston or like Diva kind of, you know, composition. But I think this Widowmaker just denies so many angles and... I mean, KMS can't really help the team in those dives, though. That's the problem, right? It's going to get dove onto, and the peel has to be invested. If you can't get picks, not much happening. Yeah, I think, like, the laid-back positioning here for uh, Illusion just allows the Widowmaker to get not very much value. And for when the aggression does come through, you should just dive on. Chief with the Echo. Echo does an incredible amount of damage, especially with the Sticky Mines and the Focus Beam. Yeah, and that's why you see KMS go over to the Echo themselves now, right? They want to take that duel. They have the Mercy Pocket as well, as opposed to the uh, lack of Mercy. You see here for Illusion, so potentially could make something work out of this against the enemy Echo. There's an anti that comes through onto both sides, in fact. Both Arn is hitting a lot of antis, but Nano comes through onto the Echo, so they want to try and go into that backline and commit, but it could potentially be killed off here as Chief gets taken out. Gerbil, however, is taken out to trade it, so once again, it's a scrappy fight that I think console rookies... I, it's going to be tricky for them to get in here. I feel like Java was more collateral damage. They were low when rolling out. And the, the peel just coming on for Lucerne 
No, not for Lucian, for uh, Naru, was incredible. He probably called it out, and every single member of his team protected him. Yeah, and Lucian, talking about them, gets taken down here. Gerbil, does that work? And with that, I think the console rookies might be able to uh, push this one forward. There are a couple of stall players that can maybe make a stall happen. Diva Ball, but I doubt it'll come to much. Flying heroes like Echo and Farah, once you have your point presence, once you like command the point, Why? they get an Why incredible amount of them. What? Wait, they what? get a pick off with that bomb? Excuse me? That's that's insane. I don't know how Susan they managed that one, but alas, Ooh. I mean the crap comes through, so bit of a C9. Gerbil actually it wasn't even a C9, Gerbil just used the mines to yeah. deny the space. Yeah, mines so. were. What it Gerbil with his mines. And now you take out Lucent here, that's gonna be an incredibly late spawn here. You're gonna take the commanding presence of high ground. And yeah, you would assume. Yeah, well, you'd hope so. You're just gonna have uh Nari sitting on payload here. I don't think I'm that's. I'm with the pulse bomb. I, I think the positioning of Naru here on the payload is annoying but necessary, right? Like you can't heal the ball, you can't heal the diva, but you have to have someone pushing that cart. But Cole does get traded on to here, so it's a one-for-one -one trade. Um, this KMS, I mean, <laughs> it still it has a duplicate and can use it to escape if they need to. This duplication onto the ball comes from Chief, actually. We're we'll using those mines to deny space. That's actually really well placed because that's on the junction that normally you'd be fighting around. So. Really good stuff there, but it looks like console rookies, they're, they're happy to just keep winning this fight out. I mean, they got, they got the picks, right? They get a slam into the back line as well here from Gerbil. KMS does get traded out, but it doesn't matter too much as everyone's forced into a small room here for uh, for, <laughs> for Illusion. Uh, Illusion have a lot of ultimates online here. They really need to use some before any picks come through. Personally, can't use theirs. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is literally last fight territory either. in there. There are stagger picks coming through. Literally, the, the series could end right here. Console rookies, they're nearing the checkpoint, that, that golden box of victory. So Cole has to invest the beat just to stay alive in this. I mean, the ball is there and can use that beat to the, the, their advantage. But look at the mines from Gerbil, always well placed on that payload. And now who touches, right? The Roadhog is the only one back who can really make this work. They do get the Nano on to them, so they use the whole hog as well. Takes out that D.Va, forces the ball away, and this slows down the team fight ever so slightly, so the players can return here for Illusion. The D.Mech onto Swiss unit as well is really good to maybe deny some of that dive potential. But Dribble's still are here and, and very much present. Fantasy oh, uses no. that pulse bomb, takes out Lucent. That was so well placed. And that was just the hog on the point with that point in presence. The Lucia's there as well, but it looks like they'll get cleaned up here potentially. However, Naru you Fantasy get taken out, but it doesn't matter whatsoever. Bomb comes through there from Swiss Unit and clean up. That's all you need. The ball will come back, but I mean, what's it going to come to? Console rookies look like they're winning this series out. Yep, that's another 3 0. We got loads of 3 0 watch today. Hopefully, less as the tournament goes on. But uh, console rookie after I think one round they lost one round in um, in Busan where they didn't look like they were the better team. Yeah, and that was and it. Every round. That was, yeah, and every round. Yeah, every every single other map they just looked so much better. I mean, to be fair, you got to give credit to some of the players here on Illusion as well for making it close. Chief specifically in this play of the game. I mean, that was a really good place to deny the the Nano High Noon. The problem with uh, Chief there is that he had the likes of KMS to contest him. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's never nice. <laughs> yeah, you're flying in the air for like a total of three seconds out of cover, boom, you're dead. Yeah, absolutely. But console rookies, again, a very deserved win there. They just had the number of illusion the entire time. No matter what composition, whether it was a double shield, the, the double bubble, the brawl, the you know hyper dive composition... Any of that, I mean, it was all just it was all just console rookies, other than that one map, like you mentioned. But I mean, they they very much well deserved this win. Um, I think if we had to give an MVP, which I don't think we are supposed to, but a definite MVP, I would say for console rookies was KMS. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think you have to really. Uh, sorry, uh, what's his name? RTG or something? Huh? The 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 blooming junk rat monster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, I think that was like I, I don't even remember the names. It was three letters. Um, NWD, NWD, NWD. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, sorry, but KMS, you just absolutely popped off, and uh, hopefully we see him pop off into the next game. Fantasy as well on the tracer though, definitely doing an incredible amount of work. Yeah, I mean that's just uh, that's just that's every just member KMS realistically diff. doing a lot of work. Oh no, definitely, but yeah, definitely a, a KMS diff there for console rookies. But that being said. We're going to a short bit of a stream break here after Console Rookies won that.
because we'll be getting an actual interview from one of the players of console rookies i would assume it'd be kms but uh, we'll be seeing after the break so don't go anywhere stay tuned
Hello, welcome back. Um, we've lost Toasty. Uh, I'm going to be doing the interview solo. Uh, and here we have two people, actually. We've got uh, um, Pokedust, who was Naru in game, I believe, and Senna, who was Fantasy, the Tracer player. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, now, I want to ask uh, one question. Did you have any doubt in your mind that you were going to lose it at any point? Uh, I, I had some doubt in my mind that I'd probably lose my mind but not the game okay um now one thing that I, I saw from viewing your uh viewing a few specific plays was that Naru the pure world Naru was uh like really good what what were the comms like uh during the seat like the, the times when you're getting dove and stuff um I mean I was basically just like uh when I was getting dove I was sort of like And then I lived. Oh, okay. Because um, I was never really in any actual trouble. Um, I mean, I there was know. the echo, there was the nano deco at one point. Uh, I think that was on the that was the dive, right? Yeah, that, that was when we were diving. I still had sleep dart. I still had my nade, I think. So I I wasn't really in any trouble. So I didn't have to actually like call yeah. other people on me. It's, if it's just a ball, like I'm safe. Um, but if they actually put something else on me, then I'd call it and not appeal. But Otherwise, I'm chilling. I fancy that was a nasty one clip. Yeah, I, <laughs> even in chat after, I was like, there's no way I just did that. Like, I just said that one clip in chat because I was surprised myself. Because, like, the comms were like, I will touch first, and then I called for my diva to touch second. And then I, in the meantime, when I touched, I, yeah, pulled that one clip off. Yeah, you were just like, casual one clip goes back to contesting point. <laughs> Um, now, in an effort to not be entirely mean to Illusion here, what was one thing about Illusion's gameplay that you thought, that was pretty okay? Uh, the I mean, Farakop was pretty good at controlling space on the, what, Dorado? Yeah, KMS just like, yeah, no, just triple headshot and you yeah, gone. I mean, once once they got it past uh, the statue, uh, past Fountain, sorry. Um, it was kind of hard to like play the game because of the corridors there, but uh, I guess that's just the nature of uh, this Dorado point against the Faro. I mean, I, I think the rush was pretty good on well, I think it was uh, that was Busan, yeah, I Sanctuary. Well, which one was I with the drum in the middle? I don't know which map exactly Sanctuary, with the yeah. drop in the middle, okay, yeah. So I the think the rush there uh... was just like way better than what. We did at the one round, I think. I think the rush was very good that round. I don't mean to take away from them um, too much, but uh, my task manager wasn't being very kind to me, <laughs> and uh, we did lose about 60% where I could barely play the game. But... Ah, okay. Um, um, yeah. Now, are you just a team of like one tricks? Because you seem to like constantly swap people in and out. Uh, um, I mean, we actually have very flexible players, except for like one. The junk rat? <laughs> Yeah, or no, we have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and is mainly a junker player, and then Ger Gerbo is like a ball ATP. So, yeah. yeah. So you just have a wrecking ball player and a junk rat player, just specialists for when you need them. The junk yeah, rat looked really good, though. On, um, yeah, yeah. I can't, I, every time I forget the map, the one with the train on it and the boost down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it's yeah. Downtown? It's downtown, downtown, yeah. Oh, downtown, you meant. Yeah. Um, the, the speed at which he built his tire was absolutely ridiculous. Um, I I need to ask questions, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, how about I ask you questions? How was your day, Sam? I I had I've had a okay day. Good. Oh, chat Did actually had two questions. Oh, chat has questions. Yeah. Yes, I forgot yeah. to look at chat. Like, what what what? Yeah, questions like, what have? questions does chat have? Let's them speak. Right, right. Um, what was the hardest part in the match? Um, I think it was our, our first struggle was in the beginning with the rush just like we just got run over in the beginning and then we adapted to that but after that was yeah Kikodos' task manager being very kind yeah what did you do to win every map I mean I, yeah, I, I, we just played like we normally did to be honest like after the second map or first map and then into the second map we started calling way more as well 
Yeah, it looked like it because it was really scrappy, Busan. Like, it looked. I think we we both said that uh, it looked like we were watching Call of Duty for a moment. <laughs> Just the, <laughs> there were so many like individual things going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, like. I, I asked for a lot of comp like I just said if I was dead nice I heard nothing I would just say comms comp like just kept calling comms if they didn't call it so okay that's that's pretty good um now in the question what was the hardest part what was the uh the funnest uh moment in the game well I can <laughs> well Joe you want to answer that ah uh, no I don't wanna, I don't want to answer anything what is this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, well, I mean, do, can I say it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, well, at the end, with the Nano Diva thing on Dorado, uh, okay. or the Nano Baby Diva, what happened at the, after, like, the game itself, it was like, both of them were screaming at each other. <laughs> just the whole time screaming at each other. Just, I don't know. It was just Alan, very fun to listen to. I know you can hear me. You know, dang. <laughs> oh, no. I know Alan is watching the stream, so he's probably terrified now. <laughs> he's going in the kennel. I blame yeah. him entirely. He he blames me, I blame him. Blame <laughs> task manager? We, we go next. Yeah, I also blame task manager. I yeah, should have yeah, blamed yeah. task manager. Oh, you're right. What's to be fair, wait, wait. Didn't you spill your uh, spill like a water over your keyboard? Yeah, I spilled yeah, like, I had like, like, like some ice because I had a migraine before the game. So like I had the like the ice oh, right, thing, yeah, yeah. like ice mold like on my head. But it like melted too much. So when when I went to put it into my drink, I fucking spilt it everywhere over the over the desk, and uh, and your keyboard, and my keyboard. It was my control button. Like, so now every time I'm pressing shift, it's actually like doing a little crouch quickly, like a tactical crouch. <laughs> so oh. like every time I sleep now, I do a little crouch. It's kind of dank actually. <laughs> so like like with your water, like two or three days ago, I spilled coke over my keyboard. <laughs> That would be really helpful for a uh, Mercy super jumping, wouldn't it? If you're shift, if you're controlling and shifting at the same time. Uh, I mean... mm, I'm trying to think. No, because I think uh, you press control and shift. Yeah, oh, but yeah. I think there's a little Almost. delay before you do it. Maybe ah, I okay. Can, like, do it perfectly. Yeah, I'm only a plat, so I don't know these things. I mean, I, I'm 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 not a Mercy player. I, I felt the Joe Pocket Don console. I remember those times. <laughs> Or yeah, your console rookies. Um, so did you all move together? Oh, what's no. the origin of the name? Well, uh, all of us except for one player on the team are from console. Literally, everyone just swapped to PC like two se like a maximum of two seasons ago or three. Yeah, so we were all on PS4 at one point, and uh, gradually a bunch of people started moving over. Uh, Ritzy, the team captain, he had a Discord. And then uh, when this tournament came up, he just asked the people in the Discord if they wanted to join the tournament. And... Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you looked really good for... Uh, I know this is going to sound very bad towards console players, <laughs> but it's a lot easier on console just because of the uh, like the, yeah, the fact the you can't pace. literally turn around. Yeah, the, the pace of the game is 10 times slower, I would say. Oh, no, not 10 times, so it's just slower than PC. Yeah, you have more time to think about things. From moving to uh, console, from yeah, you looked uh, you looked really good, uh, especially compared to like me moving from console. I mean, yeah, we just have like everyone on our team is from console except for one player, but he wasn't there today. So, well, I'm gonna probably leave you there. Uh, I want to say good luck in the rest of the tournament, and uh, yeah, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Hopefully, we yes. might get to interview at some point later. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, four five console is a maybe uh, a PC. Yeah, maybe we can uh, stream you guys in the future. Maybe even see you guys in the grand finals. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Well, uh, thanks for uh, having the interview, guys. Just we'll no moving on to the answer. Yes.
goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, our... Sometime. Um, there's only one match tomorrow, not two. So it'll be great to see you all there, and goodbye.